Oh, hey, I didn't know I hit the record button. Hey guys, this is Chelsea from Attention to Details, and today we are going to be talking all about pet hair removal. I have an Accord. It is a coupe, so we're going to see how my tall, almost six foot body can fit within a two door coupe. But we have a lot of short pet hair in very tight spaces, and I want to show you the tools and the tips that I have for removing pet hair. So let's get into it. All right, so let's do a quick examination of the interior. We've got stains, we've got ash, we've got a lot of debris. Let's go ahead and see what the condition looks like under here. Yeah, so we've got, we've got a fun day ahead of us. We're gonna work on leather. We're gonna work on the dash cluster, getting all of that nice and clean. Pet hair is not just about cleaning carpets. It's about getting it you know, out of your seats. Now these are leather, so we definitely don't have to do as much pet hair removal. But you can see, we're gonna have a fun day. I'm actually a weirdo and I love removing pet hair because it is a very gratifying challenge for me. And this one is going to be very gratifying. Alright, so we've gone ahead and removed our mats. And you can see this is quite a bit of debris. That majority of that will just be vacuumed up. Alright, so we've got our seats back. And here are the tools that we're gonna to be using today. Now, I may not use all of them, but I have them available in case I need them. Obviously, we're gonna need our crevice brush attachment to get in some of those more difficult areas. This is for headliners. Um, what I like to do whenever I am doing carpet cleaning, anything, you want to make sure that you are doing a dry brush cleaning. And what I mean is there are piles to carpets and you need to, one, lift the pile, stir the pile, because as you use it, it will get matted down. So you want to lift that so that you can get any sort of debris that is kind of been matted down underneath of it. So we have a variety of brushes. I will use a lot of these for doing the dash, uh, clusters, cup holders, things like that. Especially this one for cup holders. I will use this softer around any of the doors or you know around the steering wheel uh, mechanisms. But when it comes to pet hair removal, these are the three that I land on the most and you can actually see this is what this one looked like when I first started using it. I had to buy a new one because I've worn it down so much. But when it comes to especially short hair and the for unforgiving carpet, um, this is going to be the one that I reach for the most because it is the most aggressive. Um, if it's long hair, uh, pet hair, majority of it will be vacuumed up, but the Lily brush and the pet detailing brush, you can buy this on Amazon, on AutoGeek, Detailed Image, Autoality, they all have them. Um, also, I have found that using a drill brush is really great at just agitating the carpets. You may make a little bit of a mess. There may be pet hair flying everywhere. So if you're allergic, I don't necessarily recommend this because it is definitely going to stir the pet dander. But because we have so much ash, and debris, our vacuuming is going to be the most important step. So the vacuum that I use is the rigid five horsepower um, wet dry vac. It's just a four gallon. I have found that when it comes to detailing, you don't need the bigger canister. I'm not using it to do shampooing. I have in the past and that is suitable for shampooing. But what is more important is the horsepower. So you want something with a minimum of five horsepower. I do have one that's a six horsepower, but it's gigantic and it's annoying to move around. And this is kind of the sweet spot for me, but you definitely want to have high horsepower, minimum of five when you're doing detailing, especially for pet hair removal. So we've got, we've got our crevice attachment. Mine is nice and smooth because I've been using it for over three years. We've got a variety there. We've got a variety of other ones that slipped out of my hand, but here you can see we're actually gonna go ahead and do a very quick vacuum and I just wanna show you what having a quality vacuum does for removing pet hair. So real quick, we're gonna go ahead and vacuum this and then we'll break out our tools for any remaining pet hair. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a quick vacuum of this rug. This is the worst out of the lot 
and see just how much hair we can pick up doing a vacuuming alone. say about 75% of the hair if not a little bit more. So I want to show you guys kind of the combination of techniques that I will use. I'll just show you what it would look like if I were to use just the speedy pet stone to remove pet hair. And you can see it does agitate, it does you know break off any dead fibers like this one was just a loose string and it does kind of keep it nice and neat and contained. If you are allergic to pet hair or pet dander and you don't necessarily want a lot of pet hair kind of flying up in your face, this is a good technique as it's not messy to use, but it can be very uh, aggressive. I would not recommend this tool on seats. So we're gonna go ahead and vacuum that up. So you can see we've made an improvement in that area. There's still loose soil that we did not remove. Now mind you, I'm doing a very quick vacuum. I'm also going to be shampooing these rugs so I'm not super concerned about removing 100% of the soiling. But what I do want to try to remove is as much of the pet hair as possible because once you wet that pet hair, it's going to kind of activate an odor that is gonna be more problematic for the customer than the pet hair itself. So you wanna to try to remove as much of the pet hair as possible before you do any sort of shampooing. So, let's go ahead, make sure we're lined up. We're gonna go ahead and try the lily brush and the pet hair brush. Now you can see this is a more gentle method. If you have long hair, pet hair, this is going to be very effective for removing that. It's very good around using, you can see I've used this so much I've actually worn it down. I will use this especially around the plastic, um, you know, the seat moldings or along the edge moldings um, just to make sure that I'm not scratching it. It does a good job. You can see we've been able to pick up a good bit of pet hair. We've also been able to agitate any sand or soiling that's in there. Let's go ahead and try our lily brush and see what kind of pet hair we can remove. I have found that this is really great on removing short hair on upholstered seats and also long hair. Now as far as agitating, you can see it's not aggressive. This, Like I said, this is very similar to the, um, forgive me, my brain is farting, to the wet glove method or even the squeegee method that some detailers will recommend. So we'll go ahead, we'll vacuum this up. you can see how those techniques would work. Now the way that I will use it is I will do a combination of these tools and what I'll do is I'll kind of show you first we'll do the manual method. Uh, I want to show you what it looks like when you first agitate or do a stiff dry brush. You can see we've been able to agitate a majority of the brush or the hair. Then I would go in behind with my speedy pet stone hair removal and not only am I getting up hair I'm also getting up the loose debris that I was able to agitate with the brush. So we're going to show you what it looks like if you use a drill brush to remove the pet hair. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit more messy. Um, you don't want to sit in one spot at a high speed, especially with carpets like this because it can burn them. So you wanna not necessarily push down, but because this is going to spin, we're gonna put my knee down and put the brush at a lower speed and just gently agitate. Like I said, it's a little bit more messy. There's dirt and sand that have flown up, but you can see we've done a great job of agitating. Let's go ahead and vacuum this up.
drill brush is so effective at not only agitating the pet hair and lifting it to the surface, it's also really effective at removing sand and at removing any deep embedded dirt and soil along especially the binding. We're going to go ahead and do the drill brush all over this entire mat and vacuum it up and then I'll show you the end result on this before we shampoo it. You can see how much sand there is in this mat. Let's vacuum. And because I've agitated everything, I don't have to spend as much time vacuuming and working up every bit of hair in the carpet. So now that we've got our mats vacuumed, we have them set aside to do our shampooing, we're going to go ahead and start our quick vacuum on the interior. Now when I say quick, I'm not going to you know, obsess over pulling up every bit of hair. I am going to try to get up a majority of the debris so that way when I am agitating my carpets, I'm not actually pushing that debris back into the fiber. So we're going to go ahead and do our vacuuming. So we've actually vacuumed up any of the loose debris that was easily vacuumed up. We're going to go ahead and get our stiff brushes and go ahead and do our dry brush cleaning. So hopefully that part wasn't too long for you guys. I will try to speed it up in editing as far as to shorten it. But you can see this is our end result for removing the pet hair using those methods. Now we do have some salt around the edge uh, from winter time that we'll have to remedy as well as it looks like there was some sort of spill down the side that created kind of like a glue for dirt and soiling. So we'll remedy that during shampooing. But you can see, especially in these along the edges. Sometimes where the pet hair brush is effective on 
uh, let's say you have an Acura or even you know certain carpets that are more plush this is going to be very effective in getting a lot of the dirt and hair out but because of this type of fiber uh, being the impossible carpet an aggressive brush was definitely more advantageous for us to get a lot of that deeply embedded short hair out of the carpet so you can kind of see where we stopped we're gonna go ahead and show you how I would approach a tight narrow space like this real quick um, I'm gonna try to speed through it because obviously this is gonna take a little bit more time but the number one thing you need to understand when you're working in tight spaces like this and when there's this amount of dirt hair especially short um, not dirt hair pet hair that is short and you have that amount of soiling and ash you can expect perfection um, you're going to do the best you can because a lot of times when the pet hair is kind of embedded at different angles, you're not going to be able to properly remove it because of the way that it is laying in the fibers of the carpet. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick cleaning of this section and kind of show you and fast forward how I would approach this situation. I hope my head doesn't block the shot, but we'll go ahead and show you how I would approach that. All right, so my phone actually turned off while I was vacuuming, but you get the idea. This is the end result of using a stiff brush in a tight, narrow space, and then also kind of maneuvering the seat in different angles to try to gain access to the different areas. So you can see the kind of results we were able to get, and I would say, honestly, that looks good. For the average customer, I wouldn't even necessarily need to take it a step further with shampooing, but because of the amount of... Uh, loose soil and things and the ash as well we're gonna go ahead and do a very light shampooing maybe even just a steam cleaning just to try to work up a lot of the staining that's in the carpets but you can see we still have our work cut out for us but I want to try to quick summarize this if I can I will show you guys the end result I think a lot of people just enjoy kind of seeing that before and after so I will make sure that I show you the end result of what this interior turns out but you can see whenever you're doing detailing uh, especially pet hair removal, you're going to want to have a variety of brushes and these are the ones that I'm going to mainly recommend. Um, this is the pet hair brush. This is just a stiff detail brush. A lot of times people will use these for cleaning their polishing pads. This is the Tough Shine Tire brush, the Speedy Pet Stone, um, Pumice Stone, and then the Lily brush. Between these tools here, you're going to be able to remove effectively a majority of varieties of pet hairs that you come across. So. I hope you guys were able to you know learn a little bit about pet hair removal it's really not that intimidating of a topic to do but i will say you need to just make sure that you are allotting the appropriate amount of time be patient don't expect perfection don't kill yourself over that one hair that just might not come out but obviously if you have the right tools you're going to end up with great results so i'm going to go ahead and keep moving on this detail and you guys have a fantastic day if you like the video be sure to give me a thumbs up if not you know, let me know down below what works for you. Uh, this may not necessarily work for every detailer and there are other options out there. So let me know in the comments below what has worked for you. And hopefully we'll see you guys soon in the next video. All right, have a great day. God bless. All right, we've got our inside done. We did our shampooing. We got up a majority of the pet hair. Like I said, I am not going to worry if there's one or two strands of hair because the owner still owns the pet. So it's just going to come back. But you can see we were able to remove, I would say 95% of the pet hair. Sorry if I sound tired, it is bloody humid outside. But we got our leather cleaned, cup holders, our front dash everything looking good so hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a process before and afters and if you have any questions feel free to comment but until now we're gonna keep moving on the outside you guys have an awesome day we'll catch you later